So, good morning. Um, so, I will talk about accessibility today. Um, we, we have a lot of desktops in Debian, and, and we would like to talk about accessibility of these desktops. Um, so, there, there are all the slides and various stuff on, on the wiki of Debian.org in the accessibility maint um, wiki, wiki page. So, you can get the stuff from there. Um, so, just to give an outline, so I will introduce to accessibility, then explain how the accessibility stack works, so how you will interact with this, uh, with your desktop, and provide you with a, a list of things that you could check uh, by yourself uh, to make our life uh, easier, I mean the accessibility team uh, life. So to start with, uh, this is the output of GNU plot. Um, can somebody tell me what the accessibility issue uh, is there. I can't hear. Red, green, yeah, you have green and red bars. W why is it a problem? Well, basically, uh, colorblind people cannot distinguish between both. Um, just to g get you an idea, how many people here are colorblind can cannot distinguish at least some colors? So we have one, two, one, two people out of a couple of dozen. And indeed, it's 8% of the male people who cannot distinguish color, more or less. It depends. Some people can distinguish a bit, others uh, really not. Uh, I had a student who really could not distinguish them at all. So in the practice room, he would have to ask uh, his neighbor about which one is the red uh, curve. Um, GNU plot fly, GNU plot five, yeah, they changed the color set. Um, so this was actually um, a, a research uh, paper which said, okay, this is the proper color set that you can use and really almost everybody on earth can distinguish them except those who cannot really uh, distinguish colors at all. And still with the, I mean, the, the um, intensity of, of the color, you can still link, distinguish. So yes, things get improved. Uh, it's not so difficult, it's just a matter of changing the colors, but the most difficult part was knowing about the problem. Um, so what is accessibility? Uh, it is contracted into A11Y. Um, it means being usable by people with specific needs or specific conditions or by anybody actually. Um, so of course uh, the obvious is blind people but also people with a low vision. So they can actually see the screen but not that good. Um, deaf people, it's not much concern with a lot of things, but still, if you only uh, signal something through noise, then they cannot uh, get it. Uh, colorblind, as I said, people may have just one hand, and to type control act backspace with just one hand, it's really horrible. Um, cognition issues, so people may have problems with understanding your software just because they cannot, uh, it's not a problem of making efforts, it's really um, um, a, a health issue. Uh, motor disability, uh, so it's, it becomes difficult to use a keyboard uh, when you have Parkinson, for instance. Um, and elderly people, which basically have everything at the same time. Um, so you can have a look at the accessibility how-tos, which uh, talk a bit about all of this. Um, maybe that can be you. Uh, maybe within a couple of decades because you will get older, but also because you break your arm or whatever. So this is really something which is for everybody, not only uh, a small part of uh, the population. And still, um, there, there was a survey which showed that 10% uh, of the people consider that they are handicapped in their life, and 20% consider that they are limited. They can do everything they want, but it's, it's, it's a pain uh, quite often. Um, so handicap depends on the situation. Maybe it's just you, break, you broke your arm or you're too small to get something or you're too tall to get into um, a, a room or something. So it's not uh, a problem of the person but the situation. Um, and it's not necessarily permanent. Sometimes it's just you broke your arm for some time and then you're back to order. Um, and for me, uh, this is all about freedom zero. We, we have been discussing with Richard Stallman about this. Um, the freedom zero, as he said, was the freedom to run the program for any purpose. But okay, running the program is not really useful if you cannot use it. And 
Hermes said yes, it's just a desirable feature that you can use it. I mean, because you're disabled. Um, is that only desirable? Um, um, Richard said, well, if you really need it, then you can modify the software, it's free. Okay, but that cannot happen. I will explain that later. Um, just to give the UNO rights, so I, I put in bold the interesting parts for us. Um, so there are rights of persons with disabilities, and it says that discrimination on the basis of disability means any distinction, exclusion, or restriction on the basis of disability, which has the effect of impairing exercise of all human rights and fundamental freedoms uh, in all kinds of fields. And that includes denial of reasonable accommodation. And that's the point I want to emphasize. If you're not uh, doing the reasonable accommodation, you're actually excluding people. And that's something that the UNO um, um, considers. And what does it mean, reasonable accommodation? It means not impo imposing a disproportionate or undue burden. So we don't ask the Debian project to do a lot of things. We just ask for reasonable accommodations. And we are trying to see what we can do um, like this. So make, making things easy uh, for uh, Debian maintainers so that they have to do it, actually, in, in a way. Um, for us, it's then a question of priority in, in the projects. For us, it's a bit like internationalization. It's basically the kind of the same uh, issue, and everybody has to do it for its own language. Uh, every package should have it, etc. But then, more importantly, it's a question of who doing it. Um, accessibility is a problem in that it concerns a really small fraction of the people using computers. They already have a hard time co using computers, and it's even worse with uh, the accessibility issues. And the thing is, since there are not so many disabled people, almost nobody has these disabilities and the programming skills to fix them. And still, if you have the programming and, uh, skills, it's extremely difficult, like for instance, if you want to make the Debian installer accessible, okay, you get the CD, you, you run it, and then you don't have any output on your Braille device. What can you do? You have to first get a debugging environment, um, but nobody um, thought about having a, a debugging environment without a screen, so you have to invent that first. So it's really difficult for people with disabilities to get their thing done by themselves. So then you would have a sighted people, for instance, who could work on it, but people with, um, with sight and uh, the awareness of uh, the issue and what could be done about it, it's even uh, smaller. And so this sentence, this is free, sof free software, you can modify it, that cannot work because there are not so many people, they cannot do everything. So the support has to be uh, actually integrated into the process and the load of working on it and distributed among the maintainers. Um, of course, we would like to make the, that load as light as possible to maintainers, but uh, there is no way around uh, fixing bugs in applications so that the accessibility community doesn't have to do all the work. Um, okay, so that was just an introduction to accessibility in general, let's talk about hardware. Um, so people may use, for instance, Braille input and output, or speech synthesis, so that's mostly for uh, blind people. Um, people with um, uh, motor issues can use just one joystick, which would replace a mouse, or they would just be able to press a button, and that's still uh, enough to get things done thanks to a, a virtual keyboard. Or they could use just an eye tracking, and by blinking the eye, uh, actually a knowledge, and whatnot. We have a lot of uh, ways for people to interact with the computer. The thing is, uh, one shouldn't focus on just one technology. For instance, even for just blind people, um, Braille is not perfect, just because not uh, so many people know Braille, actually. I don't remember, but it may be like 10 or even 5% of the blind people only know um, Braille. Um, and the Braille devices are extremely expensive. It's like several uh, thousands of euros. Um, and speech synthesis either is not so good. In a lot of cases, like if you have a noisy environment, you cannot hear it, or you're disturbing your neighbors, 
Um, and also, um, it's really uh, tedious to get words spelled because you have it letter by letter. It's much uh, less convenient than reading it on a Braille device. Um, so just to show what it looks like, so a Braille cell. So usually you have eight dots like this, which uh, make for one character. Um, and the dots are moved upside and down uh, thanks to a piezo bar which is why it's ex expensive because that piezo bar it has no other use in, in the industry and so it's a really little market. And so a braille device is simply that kind of cell uh, duplicated uh, alongside um, and connected through serial USB or Bluetooth and the price is usually uh, the number of cells you have times 150 euros. Uh, so with for, for, for 40 uh, character display, you would have to pay like uh, a, a few uh, thousand euros. So it's really awfully expensive. Um, about software, um, so it's more interesting for us. Um, the first question which is interesting is why would you take the burden of making the GUI accessible? There are a lot of ap text applications. You could do everything with this. Well, not everything. That, that's the problem. A lot of things are really not available in the text mode, like a real JavaScript support in text mode is uh, actually really difficult because it doesn't sometimes even make sense uh, for JavaScript to have just characters and not pixels. Um, and for business applications, usually you have just a graphical one and you don't have a text equivalent, so you have to have a way to use them as well. And what's m even more important is that um, you shouldn't make people use a dedicated software because then uh, they don't have help around them uh, because they are using their software and nobody knows how to use it except them. And that's really a problem because then they cannot be helped by people. Um, another idea is uh, let's make accessible software the, which is dedicated to people with disability. So for instance, we have Edibros which is a, a blind oriented editor and browser. And this is generally a bad idea. Um, well, for one, because quite often it's dedicated to one kind of disability, one kind of situation, and it's not universal. So you, you would have to do it several times for each kind of disability. But then also it's just a, a problem of um, manpower. As I've said, and we don't have so many people working on this kind of thing. And so, for instance, if you wanted to maintain a web browser, you would have to implement JavaScript, Flash, tables, CSS, etc. So you don't really want to do that. Or for an Office suite, have the compatibility with uh, Microsoft and whatnot. Um, and also, it's also, again, an important thing which doesn't come to mind first. The important thing is not only getting help, but also working with people. If you have the same software, if you're used to use the same software, then you can work uh, together. Uh, you don't have to play with format conversions, uh, whatever, or even just work at the same time on the same software. You know, pointing at something, then reading what is happening there, then interacting with the other one within the software. So that's why we should really make the existing software accessible instead of writing new software. Um, another an uh, important thing is uh, we shouldn't make accessible distributions. Well, it, it can be a good idea, but uh, in the end, we want all distributions uh, to be accessible because accessibility is completely orthogonal to any other concerns, like blends and tasks. This is orthogonal with um, uh, accessibility, uh, just like be it a musician, for medicine, for teaching or whatever, all these uh, specialized distributions, they should be all accessible. So it doesn't make sense to make an accessible uh, distribution, except as being a test bed for experimental features that maybe we want to push to users to make them happy and, and, and test these things, and then we can integrate them into all the distributions. Um, so ideally, we would have accessibility everywhere. Like I enter a computer, uh, I, I enter a library, there are computers to get the catalog of, of uh, the books in the library, or you get to an, an airport and you have uh, internet access there, but on the computer, or you get to the university and you, uh, and you have the practice room. All these situations, uh, if you have 
just a Braille device, then you would have to ask the administrator to install the software and configure it and whatnot. We do not want that. You shouldn't have to ask the administrator because she's probably not there and you would have to wait for a week or uh, a month. Um, so ideally it should be just installed by default and ready for use. So that means quite close integration with the system but for instance, we managed to get it in the Debian installer. Nowadays, the standard CD installation CDs of Debian is just you insert the CD, you boot the computer, you hear a beep saying you're at the boot menu, so you can press enter, and then you let it boot, and it is actually showing the output on the Braille device. So that's really the kind of thing we want to achieve in the end. <laughs> Thanks. Um, just a couple of more design principles. So as I mentioned, just use the same software, make it accessible. Synchronized work, as I said, it's just an alternate input and output, and we work together uh, in a synchronized way. And uh, be it pervasive, so you shouldn't have ask for software installation or configuration. Okay, so that was uh, discussion. Now the real stuff. Uh, how uh, how it looks like, how it works, and what we could check. So, um, in a few words, text mode is really uh, accessible, but at least for once, it's not suited to beginners. And GNOME is quite accessible. One issue we had with uh, uh, was um, GNOME 3, which was almost a restart from scratch. I mean, the uh, status of GNOME 3.0 was really awful. Um, so we got to the point, at, at the mo uh, uh, nowadays we got to the point almost like uh, GNOME 2 before GNOME 3, but it, it was really a pain. Um, and in the end, we are really late compared to the Windows world. We have like a decade, uh, um, uh, I mean, we, we are a decade uh, late compared to them. And compared to the Apple world, we are really at Stone Age. Um, you have to understand that Apple has integrated uh, and good support for accessibility. It's always installed, it's ready for use all the time, and it's really good. You really see people who are using free software, etc., and then eventually they saw that Apple thing and they said, okay, it is really working much better than free software, so I will switch to Apple. This is really a shame for us. There is no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that good. Um, so more technically, how does it work? Um, the idea is that we have the, the application, the standard application, which uses its own abstract representation uh, through the toolkit to, to render things visually. And the idea is that we have a bus, an accessibility bus, um, which exchange with that abstract representation. And so the screen reader can just go through this bus to access the text of the application and then render this on an accessibility device. Whatever it is, is it Braille, is it speech, is it something else, I don't know. But the idea is it's really generic so that uh, we don't have to know. And so just to give an instance, so we have the X server and uh, the GDIT application renders pix maps to the X server. It is Pango which does the rendering, but there is um, in GTK, inside GTK, the text, uh, which is what we want. And so there's a part of uh, GNOME, which is called ATK, which plugs into GTK to get that text and provide it to the screen reader. So on Linux, it's called Orca. And then Orca can output this through Braille or speech. So we have this bus between ATK and Orca. It's um, basically um, an RPC um, bus, actually. So that is, Orca can ask for the text explicitly, or it can ask for getting uh, notifications about the change. So once it's registered, then ATK sends a message whenever the text is modified, so, so that Orca doesn't have to pull for uh, changes. And so it means that it's only on request from the screen reader. So if there is no screen reader, then there is no message on the bus. So it's quite lightweight when the screen reader is not there. Um, so the idea is that the screen reader gets the extract representation as a tree. So we have the main window with maybe some containers, and then we have the menu bar with several uh, items in them, and then a text area, OK button, etc. So that's the idea. The screen reader really have 
uh, we have the representation of the application, and then the user can go uh, around it. So technically speaking now, um, a lot of applications are already technically accessible in that uh, the text mode applications, for instance, you can always get the text, of course. And GTK 2 and 3 are accessible. It's, it's improving over years. Um, it, it's really in a state nowadays which can be used uh, for everyday work. And KDE, um, I mean QT actually, has been trying to push for accessibility for a long time. KDE K QT 4 had some implementation which was a bit sketchy. With Qt 5, it's much better. Um, so it is on its way uh, to getting really accessible. Um, Mono, however, had an accessibility effort, uh, but Novel basically fired all the team, the accessibility team, in 2012 or something, and so it's not maintained anymo anymore, and it has been removed from Debian because it was really not maintained. Um, so, let's see. Um, Acrobat Reader is actually accessible. Adobe made the effort of uh, plugging the rendering of the PDF file into ATK so that we, the screen reader actually gets the content of the, uh, the PDF file. And then you have the other applications, so Qt3 or XT or applications which draw things themselves like XPDF. Uh, these are really not accessible at all. Um, so to give an idea in Debian uh, of the stack, so we have Braille TTY, uh, which contains the drivers for Braille. We have speech dispatchers, which manage the drivers for speech. Then for the bus, uh, the accessibility bus, we have the server part, which is ATSPI AT core, which is generic. All toolkits use it. And then you have the GTK-ish part of it, which is GIL and LibATK. And on the Qt side, you have Qt ATSPI. Um, and in Qt 5, actually, it's integrated into the core of, of Qt. Um, and then you have the screen reader, which is called Orca. So basically, once you have all this installed, then you have the whole stack for accessibility. So now, what do we want to achieve? Uh, which is where uh, I'm, I will be asking you for trying to do things. Um, what is the goal? The goal is, at the very least, having the accessibility stack working on all desktops. That is, um, you can actually run it, and it works. It is a matter of a few tests, I will explain that, so that you can actually include them in regression tests. That would only allow to access some applications, but that's already huge, in that um, if it's all desktops which have it, then uh, a blind user, for instance, is not afraid of asking like uh, a neighbor or a coworker or whatever, um, can I use your computer just to read my mails or whatever? Um, he, it will not be convenient but for the blind user, but at least he will be able to work with his uh, coworker or whatever. And that's uh, already huge. Um, and then, of course, the trial would be that all desktops are completely accessible. I understand that this is not achievable, but that's really the target we would have, so that um, you would just uh, be able to choose your desktop. So this is more involved, I've explained why. Um, so, getting the accessibility stack working. Um, the goal is that you just run Orca and it works. Whatever situation you're in, you have already applications running and whatnot, and you just start Orca and you uh, manage to read the existing applications. At the moment, this is not enabled for uh, all toolkits. It is enabled by default in GTK3, actually, in Jesse. Uh, so it does work with GNOME, but not with GTK2, Qt4, Qt5. Quite often, people would say, yeah, but there might be bugs. Uh, it, make, it may make things uh, slower. Okay, but we are at the beginning of the release of uh, the, the development of uh, Stretch. Maybe it is the time to just enable this. And if there are bugs, let's just fix them. There's no way forward except that this. We've been not enabling accessibility for like a decade. Uh, maybe now is the time to just do it. And then, that's <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks. Um, so the question is, how do you test this? Um, so I'll explain the details, and then you'll see that we provide scripts to do it for you. The idea is that we have that accessibility bus running, so there are some demons running. You have to check that they are running. Um, and there's a script which does that uh, automatically, normally, but maybe it does not for your desktop. Um, and when it is running, you have actually uh, a, a dbus, a uh, specialized bus for accessibility, and the session bus should be providing it is its address so that applications can find it. And also the XORG uh, root window provides the address as well. And then we have to have the toolkits enable their layer for accessibility. And so all of this is actually checked uh, with um, a, a small script that I've written, and it is available on, 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 um, on PKG 11 y um, so you can, there are pointers to this on, on the wiki page, accessibility, uh, the, oh, that wasn't developed, but maint, but there are uh, links between accessibility, accessibility devil, and accessibility maint, so you should be able to find it. So the idea is that you clone this repository, there is an onf.sh file which you can source to basically define all these variables to enable accessibility in GTK2, Qt4, Qt5, etc. And once you have this, you can run make check, which runs uh, uh, GTQ2, GTQ3, Qt4, Qt5 applications and check that they are really accessible. If they are not, or for users who, who cannot manage to get their thing working, there is a troubleshoot uh, script which tests every bit one by one and tells you this is not uh, properly configured. Maybe that's the issue, actually. And also you can run orca minus L to get the list of applications. Uh, so it's a quick test, really. Uh, so you can just run like Genie or Gedit or whatever GTK application and check that orca minus L sees that. If that's the case, then, then probably the accessibility stack is working properly. Um, okay, so that was the part that you can do. Um, uh, uh, first part of that you can do. Another part is how the user will start Orca. So of course, in the foreign user use case, so uh, disabled person uses the desktop, the desktop of somebody else, he can ask uh, somebody else to run Orca for him. Um, but a shortcut would be really welcome. So for instance, when you go to a library or whatever, you, you want to use the computer, and GNOME settled on using um, Super-Alt-S to just start the uh, screen reader. Um, our concern is that, okay, GNOME chose that, maybe KDE will choose something else, etc. It would be extremely convenient to have just one so that you don't have to ask which desktop I is that. All right, this de desktop, I remember that it is that shortcut. So um, the problem we may have, I don't know, is deciding on a universal shortcut which doesn't conflict with any other shortcut in any uh, desktop. So I don't know, maybe Super Alt S is already fine. Um, maybe that's something that should be discussed at free desktop. I don't know, I, I really don't know for this. Um, for the installer, for instance, at the boot menu, you would type S and enter to select the uh, uh, speech enabled installer. So maybe just try to have just one. Um, and maybe also we could auto start it when you plug a USB braille device. That's, that may be uh, useful, but as, as long as we have a super Alt S, then we are fine uh, with starting Orca. So maybe it's not so much worth uh, spending efforts on, on uh, auto start on plugging USB braille display and really get that uh, shortcut running. Um, for the regular user, uh, you want, of course, Orca started automatically. You don't want ha to have to start it by hand each time you want to use your own computer. Um, the thing is, um, there should be at least two things. There should be an icon in the interface so that, like, the administrator of the machine enables it easily, finds it easily. And that icon also should be accessible just because the um, disabled person might want to uh, interact with him, of course. Um, that hasn't been always the case. Sometimes uh, the accessibility icon was not accessible in, in some releases of software. 
And the second thing is uh, having a command line interface for enabling it. Quite often it is the case, but the thing is, please tell us which one we should use in the Debian installer so that when the user installs uh, Debian with accessibility enabled in uh, the installer, then we enable accessibility in the installed system automatically. So we are fine with having to deal with jconf, g settings, xfconf, whatever. Just give us a way to do it and uh, document it so that we can do it. Um, and eventually, we would like all desktops to be completely accessible. So that means making like the start menu, the panel, task switching, all these tiny bits of a desktop to be uh, accessible. So if your desktop is based on GTK Qt, it's quite easy because the toolkit does it for us. Um, you should still check out what Orca and Accessizer are uh, saying. I will explain that uh, a bit later. Um, and also that everything can be achieved by using just the keyboard. It's really important. Some people just cannot use the mouse and they can see and use the keyboard, but also blind people really like being able to do everything with the keyboard and uh, speech output. And if you can do that with just a keyboard, no cheating with the mouse, then that's already quite good. If some of the parts of your interface, your desktop interface are self-drawn, not using GTK or Qt, then you will have to implement accessibility yourself. So interface with ATSPI, maybe by using ATK or talking the ATSPI protocol uh, nat natively yourself, it's, it's up to you. But that's the kind of uh, drawback for using a self-drone uh, widget. So at the moment, mostly only GNOME and MATE are really accessible like this. I mean, really usable with uh, keyboard shortcuts, etc. cetera. Um, XFC and LXD start being accessible. They don't mm, always have shortcuts, so uh, we wouldn't recommend this. So basically, people only have two choices for desktop at the moment. That's really sad. Um, so to develop accessible applications more generally, um, the idea is that you should not design your interface with uh, the GUI in mind, but rather start with uh, the logical um, uh, way of thinking about your interface first. Because then uh, the screen reader, since it sees that um, uh, structure of the application and not the uh, visual uh, um, representation, it will be easier for disabled people. And actually, in the end, it will make your code uh, much better to make it structured logically instead of graphical. And as I said, better use standard widgets because then they have integrated support for accessibility. And also make sure to use the uh, proper widget for uh, what you want to do. So for instance, if you have a, a text field to be filled and then a label in front of it, you should use the label text field uh, widget, which makes a relation between the label and the text. Otherwise, the screen reader just notices labels text. It doesn't know which is which. Um, so avoid homemade widgets, or you have to implement uh, accessibility yourself. And if you put an image, of course, provide a text alternative for the screen reader to uh, give to the user. And keep it simple for people with cognition issues, but also for blind people, if there are too many things, too, uh, too complex uh, dial box or whatever, it will be tedious for them. And it's also for your regular users. If the interface is simple, then it will be easier for them. Um, so quite often you ask, okay, but I would like to test myself. Orca has a braille monitor, so what you can simply do is running orca-e braille monitor to enable it, and then just work as usual with your desktop only using the keyboard, don't use the mouse, and then check that whatever you're doing appears on the Braille monitor and that it is correct. And uh, there's a crash test that you can do is um, to just turn on the speech and then switch off the screen and then you try to work. And you're, they're trying to tell me something, but I... Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, so try to s just switch off the screen and, and work. And you will see that it's difficult. 
uh, even developers of accessibility who are sighted don't always do that and then re they realize when they do that, okay, there, there was one thing which I didn't realize uh, that it wasn't working just because I could see the screen. Um, there's on gnome.org a guide for developing uh, accessible applications. Um, you should have a, a look at it. Uh, it, it's quite interesting. Then there is Accessizer. Maybe you will not use it because it's a sort of debugger. Uh, the idea is that it shows the tree of widgets and you can have a look at the details and check the properties that the text is really right or whatever. So you can try to use it, but most probably you will want to just use Orca and check quickly uh, what is showing up. Um, uh, one last thing about bugs. One thing to understand is that the users, the disabled users, are in a um, different um, situation than you. So if they make suggestions like in a web browser, put brackets around URLs which are clickable, and then do that, at least as an option, because it is really useful for them. You, as a sighted person, wouldn't understand why, but they do know why. And so, okay, make it an option and the users will enable it. Um, it's extremely difficult to deal with accessibility bugs because it's already not easy for the people to use your software because of uh, hindrance or whatever. But it's even more difficult for them to report bugs because they have some output on a braille device or speech or whatever and they don't even know what they are supposed to have because they cannot see what is on the screen. And the, the, so it's difficult for them to understand what is happening and so even more difficult to explain what is happening. Uh, so yes, the only uh, way out is to discuss and take the time to discuss. It's long, but there's no other way. Um, remember to ask the user for a screenshot. Uh, they don't necessarily uh, remember about doing this. Um, try, try to think about it because it's actually easy for them to do. Uh, they just don't think about it. Um, and try to keep in mind their disability and consequences. It was quite fun a, a few years ago um, during the discussion with Debian Boot uh, when we talked about making the um, uh, frame buffer accessible. Uh, some, peop some person said, okay, but then if the frame buffer doesn't show up nicely, the user will not be able to report the bug about the frame buffer not showing up nicely. Okay, but he doesn't care. He won't see it anyway. So that's fine. We can leave the bug. Um, so it's kind of uh, situations where you have to think um, the situation. You could even just uh, contact uh, an institution uh, near you to, to discuss directly with users. Um, there, there are a lot of them uh, all around the world, so you can try that. Okay, so to conclude, um, quite a few of your desktop users need accessibility, really need it, in any kind of situation. So we really want to make accessibility mainstream, and we can do quite some work, but we need your help for, for this. So you're welcome. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Samuel. So are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Do you know the current status of a uh, Chinese, Japanese, or uh, Korean support on the Braille display? So on Braille display, I don't remember exactly which Braille tables we have. Um, tables, Braille. Ah, table text. So Korean, uh, we have a table for this. Japanese, uh, we don't seem to have one. And Chinese, we do have, um, I don't remember where, but we do, I know that there is a, a proper uh, table for Chinese. Uh, Japanese, I'm surprised that I couldn't find it, but at least I think this is something which, which already works. Um, 
it has improved a lot since the desktop went to UTF-8 by default. Uh, so nowadays it's really working. I think not on the text console on Linux because Linux support uh, for um, double width uh, glyphs is not really good. Um, but on the desktop, yes, it's really working, I think. Any other questions? Well, What, what do you think could be doable at a Debian, oh, sorry. What do you think could be doable at a Debian level, I don't know, on the archive or process to, I don't know, for maintainers and developers to be aware at least when they push something that it breaks a feature or? Oh, you mean if, if, if some desktop breaks uh, accessibility support? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I've written a note about it, uh, to make this check um, on, on a VM somewhere, to run it all periodically uh, on all the desktops, um, and then have a red light in the uh, uh, tracker page of uh, these desktops so that maintainers see, oh, there's a problem here, and then a link to the wiki page so that they test themselves and then fix, or at least ask for help for fixing it. But yeah, that's the kind of thing, as usual, making accessibility not a, s a special thing, but just in the usual process, so like all these lights in, in the tracker page. So I have a question about these um, special widgets. Did you talk to Upstream, GTK, or Qt to just disallow special widgets which are not accessible, or is that not possible technically? Uh, sorry, so sorry. you said that it's problematic if people come up with their own widgets. Um, yeah. Um, is it, would it be possible to just disallow it or block it if they are not accessible, or is that technically not, is that a technical solution to a social problem? Yeah, I, I think that's one of the issues. I mean, people not aware of the problem. It is that um, the development tools not always remember, uh, remind the, the developer about the problem. Like, if you run Glade and do a, an interface, it should tell, uh, give a warning, you didn't put uh, an alternative text for an image, etc. And yes, but when, when people write C code, I don't know how, how to tell them that's, that's bad. Is there any other questions? This one? Um, yep. So you talked about people being able to turn accessibility on during the installer. I had an idea. Uh, uh, sorry, I couldn't hear. You talked about during the installation, people might press S or something to turn the yep. accessibility on. Um, I think Apple have it turned on by default. And you well, uh, Apple has it available by default, yes, and you have to type uh, a shortcut. I don't remember the shortcut for Apple. But yes, it is available on, on all the time on PC, uh, on, on Mac, and on the phone as well. Because I was thinking, I mean, it's no big deal to me if you turn it on and my computer starts talking at me or whatever during the installation. No, but when, when I say turn on, that means start talking and blubber. So it will make noise. <laughs> <laughs> So if there's no, any other questions, um, let's, oh, there's one. So the installer booting off CD and it beeps as it boots. Is anybody, has anybody checked UEFI boot to see if that works the same way? This is it again? The UEFI if what boot. boot? Look, if you boot the installer CD. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know. I haven't thought to check until just now. Does it work if you boot via UEFI instead of by instead oh, of normal BIOS? Um, I, I think it's really independent of the firmware. Um, the only thing is the boot menu, where we do have to have a beep. Exactly. And that's mm, something I didn't test myself. So for UEFI, we boot Grub instead of ISO Linux. 
Right. I don't know if Grub does a Grub, beep. Does a Grub, beep. Grub does have um, a driver for PC speaker, so it can beep, actually. Uh, I just write a note about uh, Grub beep. If you can check that, let me know, and, and we, can, we, know, we can fix it if it's not working. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And I was happy to notice that the live CD of Debian actually has the same kind of beep. I don't remember asking for it, so it really shows that things are going. Okay, so we're running out of time. So let's thank Samuel again. Thank you.